Oh. If we can give a title to my teaching, it will be Run to the Grace. Run to the Grace of God. Let us approach God's throne. Let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let us then approach God's throne of grace. There's many people who don't know, even if they kind of understand, they don't know how to respond to grace. Something I have learned is that in every church, there's always two different kinds of people. Why is that two people hear the same message, but one responds properly and the other one does not? Why? Two people sit in the same place. Well, there's a part in the Bible that can help us today. And I'm going to need that you really pay attention. I'm talking about two men. You know them very well. They both had the most unique privilege and opportunity ever given to a human being ever. Both, listen, were personally called by Jesus to follow him. Both answered the call and followed him 24-7 for three years, every day, every night. Listen, both declared repeatedly to him and to those around them their personal devotion to the Lord Jesus. Look at me. Both of these men were personally trained by Jesus for ministry. Both were students of Jesus. They were in that all day long classroom call discipleship. They saw his power over demons. They saw his power over disease. They saw his power over death. They saw his power over nature. Both men. Heard the Lord answer every important, penetrating, profound theological question ever asked of him. Listen, both of them were daily confronted with their sinful nature. Both of them were daily reminded that they had fallen as the whole human race had. And how desperately they needed forgiveness and salvation. They, both of them, they were very aware of this. Look at me. Both of them. Understood that Jesus had come to proclaim the good news for sinners. Both of them received and used, please get this, divine power. Power from Jesus and authority from Jesus was delegated to them. So that both of them were enabled to do miracles and to exercise power and authority even over demons. Eventually, both of them were sent out to preach. They share all the experiences together for those amazing three years. They were exposed to the Lord Christ in the exactly same way. They have the same experiences, same period of time. Listen, look at me. I'm doing a lot of e emphasis on this for a reason. There is more. If you follow the story, it says also that they both were taken over by Satan in one point. Both of them. To take up Satan's cause against the Lord Jesus in earth. And in the end, they both betrayed him. They both betrayed him. I know you're already thinking what I'm talking about. They betrayed him publicly, openly. They betrayed him. And they did that at the end of the three years, just before he was crucified. As a result of what they did, both, listen, they were very sad, sorry. In fact, they agonized over their betrayals. Both of them did. But one killed himself, rejecting the grace of God. Are you listening? The other one was so agonized that he repented and ran. To the grace of God. Who am I talking about? Peter. Who? Who? Peter and, Peter and what? Peter. And Judas. Two men side by side for three years. Experiencing the same thing. But one. Kill himself. End up in hell. The other one repent. And became honor. And end up in heaven. How did that happen? Well, here's the teaching. You ready to learn? 
You see, they both respond to the grace of God in a very different ways. They both had a chance in one point to respond and to repent. The first thing that we can learn is that both betray Jesus at the end. That's the first thing we need to learn. So then what made the difference between these two guys? Why does Peter end up in heaven and Judas in hell? Would you like to know? I just mentioned a little bit, but you want me that I break it down to you to understand it? Okay. The answer is simple. They had different attitudes toward Jesus. That's what it comes, or that's what it comes down to it all the time. Salvation, listen, salvation isn't by works. They did the same works. It isn't by knowledge. They had the same knowledge. They end up with the same knowledge. They were given the same information. But you see, salvation, you need to get this, can be basically boiled down to a person's attitude towards Jesus Christ. Why am I saying this? Because some of you are sitting here saying, I got it. I got it. I come every Sunday to church. But you have not responded properly to the grace of God. To put it in simple, Peter loved him and Judas by not receiving what he was expecting from God. End up. You're not getting I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy my own thing. I'm going to download my own teaching. By not receiving what he was expecting from God, he end up hating Jesus. Have you ever heard about somebody that comes to church apparently loving God, praying for something? Then that person doesn't get what it's supposed to get. And they what? They end up leaving and saying, I guess this is not working. Have you ever seen somebody like that? It's very painful for me to see people like that. My friends, churches are full of the same kind of people today. Churches are full of Peters and Judas. All hearing the same message, hearing the same truth, same doctrine, same explanation of scripture, having the same spiritual experiences and fellowship, seeing the same divine, ex my friends, grace of God and power of God, serving together, worshiping God together. But they end up in two extremely different places. Why? Because the way they respond to the grace of God. Today, I want to make sure that you understand the grace of God if it's not clear to you. And that you not only understand, but you learn to respond to the grace of God. I want that you get this. So turn to the person as you say, hey, this is, this is important that you get. This is not easy to get, but you better pay attention. This can save you at the end. And you say, well, well why is it so important? Come on, after three years. Of hearing Jesus, seeing the power. You, you will say that the more they learn about Jesus, the better they're going to get. Am I right? But no. No. Because it is all about how every one of us respond to the grace of God. Another thing that we can learn is that they both had an opportunity to respond towards the grace of God. One rejected and another one, I repeat. Run to the grace of God. You see, Judas, please get this. Because you need to understand. Some of you guys are on Facebook right now. Don't be on Facebook because you know what? You're the person that is always struggling with condemnation. You're the one that is always struggling with condemnation. And that you literally, young people, are having thoughts of taking your life away. I'm trying to help you today. We need to learn to respond to the grace of God. You see, Judas couldn't deal with the guilt of his betrayal. He felt remorse. He felt guilt. He felt sadness, sorrow. That was so overwhelming that he killed himself. But what about Peter? Did Peter kill himself? No, even that he had done the same thing. He betrayed Jesus, not for money, but nevertheless, he betrayed or he was betraying Jesus by saying, I don't know this man. He rejected Jesus in the most important time of his life. Some people say, what Judas did, it was very bad. 
Well, what Peter did, it was equals bad. It was as bad as what Judas did. We need to make that thing very clear right here. But now, how many of you guys want to see how the grace is manifested? This is the best part of the teaching. This is the best part. He was giving them the same attitude that Judas gave them when he was willing to sell Jesus. Oh, Peter. But look at what it says in Matthew 26, 75. It says, Peter, remember the word which Jesus has said before a rooster sing. You will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. He didn't kill himself. He just went out and wept. Something happened. Why? Why he didn't kill himself like the other guy? I'm going to tell you. Would you like to know? Because I would like to know. Because I'm helping always a lot of people with this. And I have discovered what is it. It is in the Bible. Something happened in that moment. What? You need to know about it. That in the middle of Peter's denial. As his denial was coming to its end. Look at what it says in Luke 22, 61. I found it. Would you like to know? Oh, man. Somebody want to know this. Look like this side is more excited today. So I'm going to look to this side only. So if somebody's taking a nap, push him to the side and say, hey, wake up. Okay, you're in the wrong place. Pastor Tony will wake you up. All right. It says, look at what it says. And the Lord turned and looked Peter eyeball to eyeball. And the Lord turned and looked Peter eyeball to eyeball. In the middle of the denial, in the middle of the betrayal, betrayal, you say it like that? The Lord turned and looked Peter eyeball to eyeball. Why do you think he saw in those eyes? I'm going to give you the microphone because you, I'm not sure you're excited or you want to preach before me. But it's true. It is true. He saw the grace of God. Jesus' eyes in that moment was nothing but the grace of God. The Lord, look at what it says in Luke 20, 22, 61, 62. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered. Peter remembered the word the Lord has spoken to him. There, before the rooster crops today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. But it says that the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Let me explain this. When Jesus and Jesus' eyes met in the darkness of Gethsemane, Judas kissed him with the kiss of hate, the kiss of a hypocrite. See, Jesus saw him eye to eye. But in that moment, he, could not, he couldn't see the grace of God. When the eyes of Peter met the eyes of Jesus, he was crushed. He was devastated and broke down in genuine, in genuine tears of true repentance. I don't know if you understand this. But I have to see only the eyes of my son or my daughter or somebody that I love sometimes. To know what is going on in the inside. How many know what I'm talking about? How many know that sometimes our eyes can express? Like sometimes I'm telling Natalie, I need that you do this. And then she see me with those eyes. How many know what I'm talking about, right? And their eyes are speaking right now to me. Or well, sometimes I notice that my son is telling me something or my wife. And, and, and sometimes I stay quiet. And I guess they see something in my eyes. And, and maybe I'm crying. Or are you with me? And they start to cry. And they said, God, Dad, don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. It's worse than you giving me discipline right now. Because your eyes can express so much. When well, that moment, when Jesus was being betrayed. Listen, Jesus knew what Judas was going to do. Do you, you understand or not? He knew. He knew since the beginning that Judas was going to do this. But he also knew that Peter was going to do that. So the moment... He saw them. He was ready to forgive them. And I don't understand uh, all clear. But I can prove you that if Judas would have fallen on his feet right there. I mean on his knees. When he came to Jesus. Are you with me? 
And he would say, God, I don't know what I'm doing. The devil took over me. And you say, and because the devil took over this guy. Hey, Peter, it was the same. At one point, even Jesus said to Peter, Satan, get apart from me. Stay away from me. To Peter. To Peter. But you see, Peter saw something in those eyes. He was totally repentant. Crushing sadness led Judas to suicide without repentance. Crushing sadness led Peter to restoration with repentance. And the difference was the way they look at Christ. The way they respond to Christ. And the difference in your life is going to be the way you respond to Christ. You need to understand that Jesus loves you no matter what. But it's because my family, Jesus loves you no matter what. He is your father. He loves you. But listen, no, it's because my father was a bad father. It doesn't matter. Jesus is your father. God is your father. He loves you no matter what. And you got to make the decision. You're going to give a hand clap to God. You better give a hand clap to God. You got to make the decision at one point. If you're going to accept it or you're going to reject it. It's very simple. They respond to a fervent way, fervent way to the eyes of Jesus. So again, what was the difference? Peter loved Jesus. Are you with me? Peter loved Jesus. And so many of you are going to make mistakes. But you need to understand that God knows that you love him. The problem is when you start to walk away and you start to get angry with God. Are you with me? And that's what happened. And Judas ended up bitter with hate in his heart, leading him to never repent. Little by little, Judas was more concerned. And you follow the story of Judas. Was concerned about the money. We should give that money to the, you know, we should do something, not giving it to the. Are you with me? Always thinking about the money and blah, blah, blah. About what was important in this earth. Nowadays, people try to do it on their own. Look at me. People are trying to do it on their own. I'm here to tell you, you can. We can't. It's only by the grace of God that we can stand. Let me try to explain. And this is the main thing of the teaching. The last thing we can learn today is that we must be careful because one day I learned something. And I'm going to give it to you. There is a Judas and Peter living in the inside of us. I want to make sure that you digest what I just said right now. Because everybody would like to say, there is a Judas living in me. No. My friends, don't be too hard with Judas. Don't be too hard with Peter. Because they live in you. Are you with me? He said, no, the son of the living God lives in me. Yes, that's true. The spirit of God lives in you. But how many know that our nature is very equal like Judas and Peter, my friends? Come on, be honest. Come on, you better give a hand clap to God. Our nature is very similar to Judas and to Peter. They live in the inside of us. You see, the Judas is the one. Who is the Judas living in us? Is the one that wants to fix the bad, but only to feel better. I want to fix it only to feel better. They're not really repentant. They want to feel better without repentance. Then the Peter in us is the one that may try to do what is right. And believes in himself trying to do what is right. But at the end, he just fails like the other one. What are you talking about? You're confusing me. No, that's what the whole teaching is about. Judas and Peter lives in us. They both. They both in one moment, they fail. The teaching here is not about Peter being good. The teaching here is that no matter what, we're going to fail in our own in one point. That's the whole teaching. The whole teaching is that even Peter said, if you remember, hey, I will not deny you. I'm going to die. These bunch of losers, they're going to deny you. But me, uh-uh. Okay, the teaching is... To help you with condemnation, with sadness. When you don't understand why you make a mistake. 
I'm helping you. So you can walk out of the situation and move forward. Because Jesus has the best intentions to make you better every single day. But you are too hard to you. Not understanding that there is a Judas and Peter. Come on, you better give a hand clap to God living in you. I know somebody like, what are you talking about? My friends, the truth is that none of us can do it on our own. We must run to the grace of God. You see, Judas is the one that no matter what is going to do wrong. Are you with me? That's the bad part in us. That's the, that's the one that is obstinate and doing wrong. And you say, well, I got the nature of Jesus Christ now in me. And how many say praise the Lord? Okay, how many say praise the Lord? Why do you end up doing wrong things? If Jesus lives in you and lives in me, right, in the Spirit of God, Paul said very clear, I want to do what is right. But the battle inside me sometimes wins and I end up doing what is wrong. I'm not here saying to you, hey, go ahead and go and do wrong. See, that's the opposite of what I'm saying. I'm saying that you cannot do it on your own. You cannot be prideful and say, I got the power of Jesus. I got the Peter living in me. Guess what? Peter himself betrayed Jesus. And all of us without God, we're going to betray Jesus. All of us without the grace of God. I don't care how strong you think you are today. Tomorrow, you may be going to have a weakness. Because you know what? God said very clear that it's only by the grace of God. That's why we got to run. Come on, you better give a hand clap to God. That's why we got to run. We got to run. We got to run to the grace of God. We got to come to the grace of God and embrace the grace of God. Every day, every moment, the love of God. What is grace? It's a love that I don't deserve. It's a forgiveness that I never worked for. How this can happen? We don't deserve it. We deserve judgment. But why? See, your mind and my mind cannot understand it. We can't. But you know what? I'm not going to be battling. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. You know what? Forget about me understanding. I'm going to run to the grace and I'm going to embrace the grace of God. I'm going to see those eyes and those eyes are telling me, I love you. I, oh, come on. You better give a hand clap to God. My friends, if there is something that we need to communicate out there, it's not judgment. It's the grace of God. Freely we receive grace. We must communicate what? Grace. Grace. People already feel bad enough about what they got going on. To still use the... To hurt them more. I hear recently that God, it was the love of God, it was like the sun. How many believe that the sun gives us light? Without the sun, we will be always in darkness. Am I right? But you see, the sun not only gave us light. The sun also gives us warmth. Are you with me? Without the worm, we would be frozen. My friends, Jesus Christ came to give light, but also came to give the worm, the grace. So when we communicate in light, okay, anybody's getting, please get this right now. When we communicate in light, we must communicate the worm of the grace of Jesus Christ. Come on, you better give a hand clap to God, my friends. Amen? The worm, did I say it right? The worm. I'm saying it very bad. The heat from God. Here's the point. None of us can do it in our own. I'm going to repeat again. You feel so bad, I cannot do it. Brother, join me. But I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a loser and I've been doing so wrong. Man, without Christ and without the grace of God, I've been serving God 30 years, but we are equal without the grace of God. I cannot stand and say, I got 30 years almost doing this. Without the grace of God, I have nothing. That's what I run every morning to the grace of God. So what are you saying? It doesn't matter what point of your life you are. You got to run to the grace of God every day. 
You better give a hand up to God, my friends, if you're getting this. You got to run to the grace of God. If you remember after Peter's mistake, Jesus is crucified. And the day of his resurrection, I'm sorry, and the day of his resurrection came. And look what happened. And John 23 and 4 says, so Peter and the other disciple, they were told, this is what happened. They removed the stone. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both of, both of them were running. They were what? I'm going to say praise the Lord for that phrase. Both were running. But the other disciple around Peter and reached the tomb first. I'm talking about John. Just like the verse says, Peter and John ran towards the tomb. And he finally realized that he had to run towards the grace of God. Amen. Then there, Jesus gave him the opportunity to embrace his grace later. When that happened, if you remember, later when Jesus appeared to them, when they went back to fishing, and after they had caught a miraculous, or what is called the miraculous catch, Jesus gave them, to Peter, gave him the opportunity to embrace his grace by asking him three times. Peter, do you love me? Which was for his complete restoration. You see, three times he had denied him. How many times? So three times he was able to confess. It's only, you know what he was saying? I love you. Well, then God said you should do this and that. Peter, do you love me? I love you. Well, you got to do this and this and that. The third time. Peter, you love me. You know why he said? It's only by your grace. In that moment, Peter said, you know everything, Lord. I do love you. It's only by your grace. In conclusion, I need to say this to you. The Bible says that by the blood of Christ, we are set free. That is our sins are forgiven. How great is the grace of God which he gave to us in such large measure. How great is the grace of God. It's grace to bring forgiveness from our sins. It's great to give us forgiveness every time we make mistakes. After we know what we're supposed to do. It's fine. But what is very important that you need to understand is that this grace is amazing. It's by the blood of Jesus. You and I have done nothing. And we can never do nothing. The only thing we are responsible is to respond. Is to what? To respond to the grace of God. What are you going to do? You're going to let the sense control you? You're going to let your bitter heart direct the future of your life? You're going to let pain keep consuming you? Or you won't allow the grace of God to set you free? I'm asking you. The musicians come now. What are you going to do? Are you going to allow the grace of God to destroy condemnation? Some of you are battling condemnation so bad. The condemnation comes from the enemy. Look at what it says here. Romans 8.1. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. No condemnation means God doesn't judge you for all you have done wrong. If you have trust or trusted Christ Jesus to took over your judgment. He took it, or he took this judgment upon himself on the cross. You need to understand that God doesn't have to judge you because Jesus was judged. 
He doesn't have to condemn you because Jesus took your condemnation. I'm very serious about this. I know you like to come to Sundays to laugh. Most of my teachings always, you know, keep you doing that. But I understood that God wanted to say something different today. He wanted to say, we got Judas and Peter sitting right here right now. What am I saying? There is maybe Judas and Peter still living in you. You need to take control. But the only way to do it is by the grace of God. You need to run to the grace of God. What am I saying? Some of you are carrying pain for mistakes in the past that you have never let go. Some of you have not deal with a situation that is suffocating you with condemnation. So I want that you stand up right now. And I'm literally going to do something. Close the side. Turn it off the side doors. I mean the side lights, please. I want you to close your eyes and, and think a little bit about what I said to you today. Peter made the same mistakes that Judas. So what was the difference? The way he responded. And you can respond today in the same way. Why don't you close your eyes right there. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that your peace come to this place. Father, let your amazing love come and fill the house.